Okay, now let's talk about setting up our desktop. It works a bit differently than the previous versions of Windows. Now, I'm going to take this Start button off of here because I personally don't want to use it. And I'll show you how you get things done without the Start button here. Okay, so to do that, I'm just going to go top right corner here. And we're going to go down to Settings. And then we'll go to Control Panel. Okay, and then we're going to go down to uninstall a program. This should all look familiar to you. Okay, so let's uninstall. And then that'll put our start button back to the way it was. Okay, so it's telling me we'll need a reboot, but we'll just keep going here. Okay, and as you see, it has put our classic start button down at the bottom there. We'll just wait for her to finish here. Okay, let's close the control panel. Okay, now when we click down here, it takes us back to the way it was before we put the start button on there. Now the reason I wanted to come here was to show you how that you can add things to the taskbar at the bottom here and create shortcuts for your desktop screen. And it's easy to do. Let's say that we want to put Notepad on as a shortcut. So if we right click on it, we get some options at the bottom. We have pin to taskbar and we have pin to start, and we have open file location. Now, what we're going to do first is let's pin it to the taskbar. So we click on that. Now let's go back to the desktop. Okay, and there you go. Notepad is sitting down on the taskbar. Now, for adding shortcuts, is a little bit different. Let's go back here again. And let's say we want to add a shortcut to something. Let's pick um, well, Internet Explorer. We right click on there. And then we can go over to Open File Location. OK, it has now highlighted the file for us. And it's right, in, right where the program is located. So all we've got to do now is right click on it and then we go down to send to and desktop. Create a shortcut and there you go. We now have our shortcuts. So that's how you can get things on your taskbar and get your shortcuts on there. That's how you have to do it with Windows 8. Okay so let's pin FileZilla as a shortcut, so we right click on there, open file location, right click, and then send to desktop. And there is our shortcut for FileZilla. Now I like to pin my control panel down here so that I have easy access to it when I'm in the desktop mode. Now they also have it here if you want to do it this way, but I like to have a, a quick access to it right on the taskbar. So again, we'll click here, go to control panel, and then we'll just pin it to the taskbar. And that's just like that. We have it there, there the back to desktop. And there's our control panel. So when we want to do something in the control panel, it's just as simple as that one click down there. Okay, now setting up our backgrounds, it is just as easy to do as it was before. You can use a control panel to do it, and you can go into appearance and personalization. You can also do it from the Windows 8 side by going down to settings and then personalization. Now this just brought us right to the control panel, but it brought us right where we we need to be rather than having to go through the control panel. So it really is doing the same thing. So from here we can set our theme as we like. Let's uh, have a look at some of these. 
You can also just pick a, a theme and one of your pictures or however you want to do it. Okay. And then down here, you can choose your colors. Now, automatic color just matches the colors of your taskbar and your borders to your theme, as you see. But you can go ahead and change them here if you don't want it to do that and just make it a uh, contrasting color. It's up to you how you want to do it. Okay, so let's save the changes. And also you got your screen saver here. So it, that nothing's really changed there other than you can get to it through within Windows 8's charm menu and settings. Okay, now let's talk about email. You'll notice that, as same as with Windows 7, there's uh, nothing here for email as far as the desktop's concerned. But if we go into our charm bar, into the start, you'll see that we have mail right here. Now this built-in email is actually quite good. Now you already have your account that you started when you logged into Windows for the first time, but you can also add accounts. Now to do that, you can go, while you're in this, in this program, you can go down to settings with the charm bar. And when you're in a program and you go to settings, it brings up the settings for that particular account. Okay, so if you go to accounts now, you can add an account and then the different kinds. So an Outlook, Exchange, Google, or other account. So that's how you can add other accounts to this. You have options. Okay, and then you can choose how you want to set these options. Okay, and that's really about all there is to it. So you will get your different accounts on the left-hand side here. We're, right now we only have one, but they would be listed down at the bottom left here as you add more accounts. Okay, so let's go back. Just now, the only problem is that you have to come into here to use this mail. You can't pin it to the taskbar or create a shortcut with it. Okay, so we have, we can unpin it from the start, uninstall it, or find and start. If we click find and start, all it does is bring us here and shows us the program in the start menu. Now, if you don't want to use that, you want to use a traditional mail client, you can use really any one you want. But the one I like to use is Windows Live Mail. Okay, so let's go, actually, let's go back to the desktop here. And let's open up our web browser. And then we're going to go and I'm just going to install a mail client. It's very simple to do. So I go. Okay, so we'll go Windows Live Essentials. Okay, so we want to find it from the Windows site. No, don't go to one of these other sites. There's Windows Live Essentials. So just make sure you're downloading the most recent one. Okay, now you can find that out by going into View System Requirements. And you should do this anyway, but you, you should definitely have it. So Windows Essentials, Essentials. 2012. So 32 or 64-bit versions of Windows 7 or 64-bit version of Windows 8. Okay, and just make sure you got all of the stuff you need here. Okay, so we know that we are good there, so let's go ahead and download it. And we'll do run. Okay, now notice I'm using Internet Explorer. The Internet Explorer that comes with Windows 8.1 is actually quite good. So if, if you want to make a switch to Windows Explorer, I have uh, 
that is something that is, a, is not a bad idea. It's a lot better than it used to be. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to choose. And, okay, I don't want Sky, SkyDrive or Photo Gallery or Messenger or Writer. Now, I've already installed Mail on one of my other user IDs, so it's already here. But what you would do is you would just check Mail, and then you would go through and install the whole thing. Okay, so once it's installed, what you can do is, again, go back into here, and then find Windows Live Mail. So let's... Uh, There's Windows Live Mail. So if we right click on that, we can either pin it to the taskbar, or if you want to make a shortcut, you do it this way. I'm going to pin it to the taskbar. Okay, so let's go back to the desktop. Actually, I'm going to put these back to most used and back to the desktop. Okay, so down at the bottom here now, we have our Windows Live Mail. If we click on that, you can set up your email client at this time. Okay, so you gotta accept the service agreement. Okay, and then all you gotta do now is start adding your email accounts in here. It's very simple if you have a Gmail account you can you just put in your Gmail address and, and your password and it sets everything else up. Otherwise you just go through and set up your email accounts as you normally would an email client and you have your email all set up. Okay, so at this point where we are looking good, we have a full desktop system going. We have easy access to our shortcuts easy access to the control panel. We have uh, email client right from here. So we're ready to operate in desktop mode. We've set this so that it will boot to the desktop. Remember we go went here, properties, and then navigation, and this should all be set up to go to the desktop. Okay, and in the next video, I'm going to show you some of the good features of Windows 8.1 that you will want to set up.